So really excited. Today I am joined by Stuart Lawrence who has written a book called Silence is Not an Option and it is brilliant to be here today with you and great to be in person. No, definitely, definitely. Oh. Thank you for having me. It's oh, you're, here. you're very welcome. Now, I'm just so excited to talk to you about your book. But firstly, I'd love to read the um, about the author section of your book so everyone can get a feel for who you are. Um, so Stuart Lawrence is a motivational speaker and youth engagement specialist. His brother, Stephen Lawrence, was murdered in a racially motivated attack in 1993. The Lawrence family's tireless campaign for justice has led to uh, cultural shifts and changes in attitudes towards racism within British society. Stuart worked as a teacher for 15 years and he now works within the education system to equip young people with the mindset to believe and achieve what they want in life, no matter the challenges they may face. With the Stephen Lawrence Foundation, Stuart helped to promote Stephen Lawrence Day, marked each year on the 22nd of April, the day in 1993 that Stephen died. Stephen Lawrence Day is a celebration of his life and legacy, a moment to reflect and to keep the focus on racial inequality and to celebrate efforts to remove it. Um, you do so much um, and uh, it's absolutely wonderful, but what we are talking about today is this book and I loved it. Thank you. You've aimed it at 10 years and older, yeah. um, but I was like literally folding down <laughs> all the different corners of the book to be like, right, later on, I'm gonna have to answer these questions and do these motivational things. Yeah. And, and I think it's so good that you've done that. So uh, thank you very much. There is confidence builders, there's wisdom, there's powerful affirmations. Um, and what I loved about it, it's as if you're an older brother talking to young yeah. people, yeah. you're giving them that advice but not preaching um, and, and I assume you made a conscious effort to do that because it's yeah. quite hard to talk to teens isn't definitely, it? Definitely, definitely and I, I wanted to feel like that we were we were friends almost and it was advice I was giving rather than dictating to someone. Uh, I think with young people especially if you can approach things in that way they, they feel like they can buy into it a lot more um, and this is what my brother did for me as well, he was the, the big brother that enabled me to be the best version of myself. Yeah. That's what I want for other people. Yeah, and I think um, what the book, as I said, it, it, it talks to adults too. I yeah. think anybody of any age can read this book. Yeah. Um, and I love when we were speaking earlier that you were saying you feel that everyone, can you say it again about how you feel everyone is sort of st yeah, stuck Yeah, so I, I say to everyone all the time, like for myself, I'm stuck at 16. You know, a significant event happened at 16 and, and that's where mentally in my mind I feel like I'm stuck at. And I feel like everyone has that about them. Something will happen in life where it's a momentum moment, it stops you, you think about it, you reflect, and then from that point onwards, that's what you remember most. Uh, and I just hope that the book does talk to that inner person, that inner child in all of us, that, that's hoping to get out somewhere. Well, it definitely talked to mine, and I've got six-year-old kids, and I just can't wait till I feel that they're ready for a book like this. And I actually don't think it's very long. I think there's parts of this yeah. that I could start doing with them definitely, now. Definitely. And that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to have a book that parents could read with their children, allow their children to read and have those conversations and start broaching those conversations that you might not have and where does that start from how do you how do you approach it and by saying to them in, in the book as well to young people that they can go and speak to someone else about the things that they think about the way that they feel hopefully again will allow those conversations to happen naturally mm. Mm. well i'd love to dive deeper into the book yeah. um love to sort of specifically go into certain sections and get you to sort of give your opinion on each of them Definitely. but I, i'd like to start with your brother yeah. um you say in the book that he was your superhero yeah um, and and you say that after his murder, you said, I asked myself what my big brother would want me to do and how would he want me to act? Yeah. Um, when you were writing this, was he very much forefront of mind and did you feel like he was sort of there with you? Yeah, you no, it? definitely. I, he, I feel like he's with me all the time. There, there isn't a day that I don't think about him or I don't speak about him. Um, and then, yeah, especially in those early days, it was, it was a big, as I said, I spent, the, I, I spent like 11 years with him sharing the bedroom. You know, the last person I spoke to at night time before I went to sleep. So not to have him there anymore was, was a big, massive gap. And how old point. were you and how old was he when he died? 16, I was 16 and he was 18. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was just about to do my GCSEs. Um, I had aspirations and hopes to try and surpass and, and beat the grades that he got, because again, that's the type of yeah. rivalry competition that we had with each other. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a difficult time. And, and as I said, then I had to remember as well that I had a younger sister. Who, who hadn't had the same experience of Stephen and his upbringing and his guidance. So I really wanted to be there for her and, and to try and fulfill that role for her that Stephen mm. fulfilled for me. And I 
And you say in the book that you felt you had to be perfect. Um, and what I love about this is you very much say to young people that they shouldn't be too hard on themselves. Yeah. They don't have to be perfect. Exactly. And that just keep trying to be better than the day before. Exactly. And, and I know I think lots of young people get that. I know yeah. I had it when I was younger and I'm sure literally everyone has that thing of like, you know, how do I be my perfect self? Yeah. And it's near impossible task to... It is impossible. It's, yeah. it's impossible not to have anything that we just go, I could have done that in a week better, I could have done that in a week. But it's about how do we, and I say to people all the time, if your friend was to phone you and say to you, I'm having a really rubbish day, to really, you wouldn't then go, oh, well, yeah, just get on with it, you know, you should be having a rubbish day. You'd be going, oh, why are you going? And try to pick them up and lift them up. But we don't do it to ourselves. We're mm. so easy to go over and make it even worse when we're feeling negative about ourselves rather than just going, do you know what? This just happened. I can get over it. Next time, another situation, it'll be better. And just give mm -hmm. ourselves that little pep talk that sometimes we need. So I just try and encourage people to be as kind as you are to other people, to, or to yourself as well. Just really, just take a little bit of time and focus on yourself. So when did you realise you didn't have to be perfect? Because you said in the book you thought you had to be perfect. What, when did you uh, start listening to that <laughs> advice? Uh, I, I probably don't listen to it enough. Uh, you know, my mum, I say to all the time, my mum's quite a taskmaster and quite a, a hard lady to follow. And, and she sets her standards really, really high that I try to meet. Um, but I just I try to remind myself, especially like at the end of a day, where I just feel like oh, you know, I could have mm. said, to don't, don't worry about it. You know, can you be better tomorrow? Can you do it better tomorrow? So I try and, to and I think as you get older, you start to realise the importance of that. Yeah. But also, I think because you've been around a bit longer, you've had a lot more experience. It does make it easier. Doesn't yeah, definitely, hundred percent, hundred percent. That that le the breath experience is everything that you really need. And hindsight to know that tomorrow could be a better day as well. Sometimes young people can't see that. Mm. Mm. And did you? So you taught at a school for 15 years? Yeah, yeah. Uh, was that one school or a So that was one school. school. So one school for 15 years. It was a, a school, all girls school in South West London. Uh, I thought that it would be one of the easiest jobs I had in my life. Um, and, it, and it wasn't. But again, I learned so much. And of all the things I have done up to date, I think that's definitely going to be ones that I, I look back on with such fond memories of being able to help people through the hoop of school and, and then pass on the love of graphics and being creative onto the other young people as well and then see them go to university get jobs in that field as well it's a great achievement mm, amazing and, I, and were they the inspiration to write something like this did you think that that kids needed a book like this and it wasn't something that they were getting necessarily in school so i i do feel like soft skills uh and a pastoral sort of role that teachers have sometimes is sometimes missing and we don't have a lot of time for that um and i really liked when kids came in at 11 years old you know, they've just finished being the big I am at primary school where they knew everything, knew everyone, knew how it ticked and worked. And now all of a sudden, they're in secondary school. You know, they've got eight or nine different teachers they have to get to know, work out what they want, how to behave in each of those different scenarios. Expectations around work as well is different. And I used to love it just to say to them, like, you can now reinvent yourself. You, you all have a, an ending of a chapter, beginning of a new one. What do you want to be? How do you want to be known as? And anything that's happened previously, I don't need to know about because I weren't there. So it's a brilliant opportunity for them to reinvent themselves to start mm. again. And I love you've got a sort of list of six questions that I think is exactly that, where yeah. you can like really think about who you are as a person, Definitely. and then that sort of helps you on your journey. Definitely. Of how you can try and get to where you want to get yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like if, if you if you boil it down to some small little key indicators, you can then see where it could go. And what I love to tell them as well is that you, they think that oh, I'm going to be a lawyer or a doctor, and that's the job for life. It might not be. You, you may go into law and do it for a couple of years and realise mm. that there's other things you want to do and investigate and be about and then change slightly. And that's what's really powerful to know as well, that you don't have to be just one fixed thing for the rest of your life. You can evolve, grow, develop, and have other ideas and interests as well. Yeah. And that's where the teaching's really important because I think it has to be broad. Yeah. It has to make people understand that they have the ability to take change path. And I think we, we have a charity called Big Change that um, focuses on trying to help young people thrive in life yeah. and not just exams. And I think that's yeah. where the education system is lacking at the moment because you don't have enough time yeah. to focus on those other skills yeah. that will help you later on because exactly. you're cramming for yeah. those exams. Yeah. At the moment. And I say to people all the time, where in life do we have to do something by ourselves for two hours in exam conditions, not yeah. ask for any help. It doesn't happen. And that's another reason why I felt like towards my end of my teaching career, I was like being conflicted by an understanding that we're trying to get these kids to perform, but then there is nowhere else in life that we have mm. to perform like that. So it's a bit surreal and unfair for them, but 
Mm. Again, at the moment, that's where we're, we're measuring education and learning and knowledge. Uh, I'm hopeful that as we go forward, that we have a better understanding that we can change some things there mm. as well. Well, it's books like this that are adjunct to the education system at the moment. And, and I think what I got out of it really strongly was that you're trying to teach young people how they have the power yeah. to have an impact on the world Definitely. Um, and, and in such a relatable way. Yeah. Um, there are a few things that I love, like, and then it's actually something I've heard before and it's really struck with me, but when you said, like, don't worry about failing, yeah. fail yeah. is your first attempt in learning. Definitely. Definitely. And it's those things that yeah. kids really can latch on yeah, to and be like, Definitely. And it's really oh, important because you, you think about it as a child, when someone does, when they do things for the first time, why would they do it perfectly the first time? That's the first yeah. time they've done it. And, and how that expectation, and when we do things wrong as adults, we go, oh, I'll learn from that. Never mind, I'll do better next time. And we're quite easy to brush over it. Whereas sometimes as adults, we really go, oh, you've done that wrong, and really emphasize the point where we just go, cool, it didn't quite work out. Can you be better next time? And that's it, that's yeah. all we need to do. There's a school that we work with in East London, and um, it's a primary school, but what they do for all different things, whether it's English or art or, 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 or any, any subject, they do their first attempt yeah. and then they get the markings put all over the first attempt. Then they go say, go away, do it again. This is what we, this is what we've talked about together and let's do the next attempt. Yeah. And then they do it three times. And, and it's not just the finished product that gets put on the wall, but it's all the attempts that got Brilliant. them to the finished yeah. product. Yeah. And especially with something like art, really visual. Yeah. You can see the difference from that first painting, 100%. the third painting, painting and the progress yeah, that they def- made. And it, I suppose by seeing and highlighting that progress, it shows them it is possible from where they first attempted, maybe did it again a second time, mm-hmm. to when they come to the third time. So that visual representation of progress is really important for them to see, because again, that's what life's like. You know, yeah. How many times have we self tried to do something, like baking a cake or making a dish or something, it didn't quite work out. You know, you've got to think, oh, what's missing? And add those extra bits and just keep on enhancing it and, and making it better every time. Yeah. Um, have you had many people read the book yet? Have you had much feedback from teenagers? Yeah, so my, my best bit of feedback from a teenager so far was that a mum um, wrote to me on Instagram saying that her son had read the book and, and then came down the next morning and said, I'm going to get up at half past six every day, mum. I'm going to do my homework before I go to school and hopefully that will enable me to start my day off better. Mm, and for, and for yeah. me, that was just so powerful to know that he could see the benefits of doing something for himself and it wasn't coming from her. And all she needs now to do is just reinforce it, support him in that. And he might fall off and, and not do it a couple of days. And it's just for her to go, you know, yeah. what do we say about the book? What's that? And just to reinforce it. And that's what I'd want to do to be, my mum always says to me, if two people say the same thing that don't know each other, there must be something in it. And that's what I want to try and do for parents. Cause I know how hard it is to try and be the parent and to give advice. And it'll come across that you're being, you know, wagging your finger and being too authoritarian and, and yeah, you, and kids don't like to listen to their parents. No, they don't. <laughs> so and, and that's, it's lovely yeah, having someone else exactly, that can exactly. say it as Yeah, well. definitely. But my son, my, my own son now has worked out that I do motivational speaking and I do this sort of thing. So he now says, oh, Dad, I'm not, I'm not one of your people you do your motivational speaking to. So I'm now absolutely blown out the wall completely. So I'm going to need more people to, to help me along with Theo as well. Yeah. yeah. But, and Theo's 10, yep. is he? Yep. Um, and so was he your guinea pig for a lot yeah. of this? Did you get him yeah. to answer a lot of the questions and he do that? He did, yeah. Listen. And because like I said, I, I've always seen 11 to 18, those age groups of young people and how they develop and grow. And I've never been sort of interested or know, have much knowledge about the bits before sort of primary school to that point. So, but I've now seen it for my first time myself with my own son. And I've seen how at 10 now, his personality, his characteristics, his individualness is coming out of him now. And it's a lot more confident and a lot more self-assured. And I said, probably three or four years, he's not going to go out with me and his mum no more. We're not going to be the cool mm-hmm. people he wants to go out, he's not going out with his friends. So. Yeah, I just wanted to be able to give him principles and characteristics and traits that will enable him to be the strong character I need him to be when, when other people might be asking him to do things that he, he knows are not quite right to stand up for himself and to be able to, to voice his opinion. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, it's just so important that. And I think the other thing that I think is really important is the positive mindset. Yeah. We do it a lot as a family. Like, it's something that I've been brought up with. Not, it hasn't sort of been rammed down our throat. It's yeah. just been from watching my parents with the yeah. positive mindset. It sort Definitely. of naturally happens with me and that's again something that you talk about in the book yeah. do you think that's something that's lacking within the education system yeah. at the moment i do uh, and is there a way do you think do you think it's changing like people know about growth mindset nowadays yeah. do you think it's getting into schools or do you think it's not quite there yet a little bit more um so my son's 10 so he's, he's been doing health and well-being you know but he goes to quite a privileged school so that, that's something that's quite prevalent in the school that he goes to and 
you know, I know from my own my teaching background, um, health and well-being and mental wellness wasn't something I really I spoke to kids about until 12, 13, through something called PHSE and citizenship. Mm -hmm. And I just think if we, if we can talk to young people about it earlier, get them to have a, a better understanding of how their mind works and how they can control what they think. And if they have a negative thought, how they can deal with those negative thoughts by talking, by sharing, by having open conversations, then that's going to help them be the better adults in the future because we're building them up for something. Whereas yeah. I think if we leave it too late, then all those negative things that they've had about themselves are just being reinforced up until that point. So the earlier we can get in there, the better, I think. So yeah, I think there's a bit of work to do for primary schools. And again, I don't like to try and put too many things at teachers' doors because that's always the answer. So mm -hmm. I think maybe there needs to be a bit of understanding between school parents and, and child where we can work together on these things and like i said those positive reaffirmations every day are just good things to talk about mm. there's um quite a lot of great online tools now yeah. um but it's just also pointing having been pointed in the right direction so yeah. i got told about a growth mindset thing that sends me an email every few days for children brilliant um and but unless you know about yeah. it it's yeah. quite hard to find Definitely. so i think it's just making sure like people like you getting into schools and yeah. getting out there and just telling kids the importance of having a positive mindset and how you do it yeah, as well definitely, because definitely. it's all very well saying have a positive mindset you're like oh but the negative thought is just always there <laughs> definitely definitely and that's what i say to me if it's when a negative thought comes you are in control of that thought process which they don't seem to understand and i say to mm. them the voice that we all have inside our heads as well which you all just think we're the only one that has this voice and we sort of look around going i don't know they can hear this voice and those sort of things i say no we've all got that voice and you can dictate and tell that voice anything so if it says you're rubbish you can go, well, I may be rubbish today, but I'm going to be better tomorrow. And it's just those little things that you can do to change it and yeah. the power that you have to change it as well. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Now we're going to go into the book. Okay. Because your book is, it's not just really well written, but it's also got some beautiful diagrams and pictures and things. Yeah. Um, so what I thought I would do is just show a page to the camera yeah. and to you, and then you could quick fire tell me about that page. Yeah, sure. You are your own superhero. Yeah. Uh, so that was around the sort of principle about comp competing with other people and how lots of kids and young people feel like if someone else in their class gets a good grade, they think, oh, I'm going to try and get as good a grade as that person. When I say to if you find yourself as your own competitor, you can either push yourself on to get the grade like someone else did or stop yourself from getting a grade. We are our own worst enemy. We can all be our own best friends as well. So, again, it's about how do we control our own narrative? How can we be in control of that by saying, right, if I work on myself and get better every day, then that's the best I can possibly be, rather than trying to compare ourselves to other people. So that was the sort of thinking behind that one. Mm. It's also a thing that comes with age, that one, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. like you stop comparing yourself as you get older, yeah, but if you could only teach it earlier, yeah, it's so important. Definitely. Privilege. Yeah. Uh, I like to understand and people to know that we all have privileges. You know, I have a privilege of being Born in, born in this country, the house that I live in, the lifestyle that I have, and I see that as a privilege because I know and understand that other people that may live somewhere else may not have had the same start as I did. And just to understand that in itself is, is good. And I'm saying, once we understand that, we are able then to understand that some people may not have the same opportunity as us. And then we've got to really hold the opportunities we do have as value and to really treat them as values and then move on and it's to have a better understanding that some people may not have the same opportunity as us and when they don't does that make us a worse or better person it doesn't really it just means that the circumstance of difference that's all it means mm. yeah. have you seen that youtube clip i'm sure you have where um there's lots of people that line up on a start line to have a yes, running race yes, and the man says yeah. i've got a hundred dollars yeah. for the person who wins the race but if you yeah. I've got two parents that are still together, step forward. Yeah. If you can afford three meals a day, step forward. Yeah. If you have Wi-Fi at home, step forward. <laughs> yeah. um, and so on and so forth. And then you get a whole load of people and someone is actually near the finish line already. Exactly. And he says, is this race a fair race? Yeah, no, definitely. So this one means a lot to me. Yeah. My job at work is um, Chief Purpose and Vision Officer. Yeah. And so I'd just love to you, you to explain to everyone what you mean by purpose. Um because we, we all have a purpose in life and sometimes when we're younger we don't know what that purpose is and I think we grow into it but then that, that can be shaped and modelled by uh, things that we like things that we're interested to influence of other people and I just wanted everyone to understand that we all every single person on this earth I believe has their own individual purpose for some sort of reason and sometimes we don't always know what that reason is straight away 
but I, I hope and believe that throughout life you'll find your purpose. And, and then once you find it, I'd say grab it with both hands and just run with it. And it really helps you on your journey, doesn't it? It does, it does. And it then makes all the rest of the things that happen to you, it gives it some sort of reasoning and some sort of uh, value to it. To, to know that you've had to go through these different things to get to that point. So, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm quite a big one on, on purpose. And I just feel like if we all were just to take a little bit of moment of time and just to really focus down and understand our purpose, then, like I said, all the negativity, all the bad things then become points of things that we can use as reference points on our mission, on our journey. Mm. And, I, and I don't want to keep giving schools a bad rep because no. they are fantastic yeah, and definitely. teachers are fantastic. But how great if that was taught in school? Yeah, and it's, again, the thing with teaching, I think, is is that because they're trying to get people through the prescriptiveness of what we've got to get through. So for primary schools, it's to try and get them their SAT so that they can move on to secondary school. And then from secondary school, it's about GCSEs. All the rest of the stuff somehow gets lost and, and left behind, but they learn stuff. It's called a soft education mm -hmm. where kids interact with each other and learn things without adults. And I think that's really important as well to happen. And that's that's where, for me, a lot of the real learning comes when kids are together and there is no adults around. That's where the real essence of learning and, and growth comes from. And having that time. I saw your children meditating the other day, which I thought was absolutely beautiful because I, I, I talk about that all the time. Just the importance of just being still in the moment for about a time, just to mm. listen and to hear yourself is really important. So I, I thought that's really I beautiful. was I was so shocked by that, but in the most heartwarming way. Yeah. Um, not only had they not come down to wake us up pre seven o'clock, um, but then I looked to be like, oh, where are they? Oh my gosh, they're dressed and meditating in their bedroom. I just thought it was absolutely okay. amazing. Definitely. I, I haven't seen it again, <laughs> uh, but I'm sure hopefully yeah, if it's there somewhere, they will, they will they do, will it, do it, again. it again. 100%, 100%. Yeah. And as I said, for anyone to just want to start, I just say, just take a minute, try for a minute first and then and build on from there and, and then see how long you can get to where you're just in a quiet space, listen to the outside, trees, playing, whatever it is, and just, be at one with yourself for a moment mm. before you then have to get back to the, the stresses and strains of everyday life of kids, family, work, etc. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so true. Um, attitude. I say to my son, this is one of the things we try to say to him every morning before he goes off to school, which is you, there's two things in life you can control. One is your attitude and one is your effort. And if you have a good attitude and apply good effort, then nine times out of ten you have a good day. So yeah, I, it's, it's something I've I found that young people have an understanding that about self and, and that then that when you start to think about yourself and only yourself, that then you can develop a bit of an attitude about that. I really want you to be just to be recognised of that and to know that you are important, but we're all important. And, 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 and with that, to, to know that you're not more important than anyone else. So having that mindset and having that right attitude to that was really important for me to understand. Dream big visualization exercises yeah uh, so that for me is is really important because uh, especially after Stephen I found it really hard to forward plan and to look forward to things and to think that they, they think you possibly the things could be good in the future so I really uh, now write things down you know I'm, I'm always trying to have visual representation of where I want to be now where I want to be in a year's time five years time ten years time and I do believe that if you think it, if you write it down, if you say it, things things tend to happen. Things mm. tend to happen in that positive way. And yeah, I, I try to be as positive and as hopeful as possible about lots of things. So yeah, I think that's important. Yeah, I'm the same. I think, uh, as you say, write things down and then you've got that goal to aim towards. Yeah. So if you don't ever know what you want to aim for, it's near impossible to get there. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But good planning, isn't it? Okay, the most important project you will ever work on will be yourself. Yeah. The similar sort of stuff. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And, and again, it's someone said that to me after I finished university. Um, and I was just like, what? Really, and then when I think about it now, if you if you are if you just work on the being the best version of yourself, then whatever role, whatever job, whoever you interact with, it will be a positive thing because you're the best version of yourself at that moment at that time. And again, that's something that I believe that we work at every day. And I say to people all the time that whatever I do today, tomorrow I hope to be better. And that's all I try to do. If I get another day tomorrow, can I be better than I was today? Yeah. yeah. And then go back to the beginning of don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah. If on one day you're not, because <laughs> yeah, otherwise yeah, you, can get, you can get that definitely. negative thought yeah, coming definitely. back. But definitely. you know, always aim to get better. Yeah, but definitely. if you have a few hiccups along the way, that's it's just normal. Life. Yeah, because yeah. evolution of life is like that, isn't it? Good day, bad day, good day, bad day. We, we can't always have good days because life's just not like that. Mm. As much as we'd love it to be, it's just not like that. So. 
Just understand when you're having a bad day, just go, do you know what, today's just a bad day, I'm gonna move on from it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, the final page of the book. Um, uh, you said the biggest lesson that you learned since Stephen's murder is that tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Yeah. And um, that you learned to try and not waste a day, an hour or a minute. Yeah. So again, like especially with Zoom and stuff and, and lockdown, we, we've been on, I've been on some massive mission of just every day, just at it, at it, at it. And um, yeah, I, I try to maximize my time as much as possible because as I said, I, I don't know what will happen tomorrow. And mm. I want to know that while I was here, I did the best I could. I, I tried to reach as many people as I could. Uh, I tried to be as happy as I could. Uh, I tried to love as much as I can. Like those sort of things for me are just important because yeah, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And if, if today was my last day, then I want to know that I did the best and everyone knew. I told them I loved them, I cared for them, and, and, I, and I was just the best version I could of myself. Mm. Oh, I love that so much. Um, and then, obviously, there is a lesson in almost everything. Yep, every day's a learning day. You can learn yeah. something every day. you just got to be open to it. Um, and that's what I used to say to the kids at school. Like, you can teach me something today. I can teach you something, but I bet you can teach me something as well. And being open to, be, to, be, to learn something from someone else, I think it's really important because... As much as I have a thirst for knowledge, I don't know everything. Mm. I will never ever know everything, but I want to learn everything. So that's what I try to do. I'm, I'm finding it amazing. My kids are only six and I'm learning stuff from them now. They bring back so many little snippets of information from school. I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah, I, definitely. You, know, you guys are teaching me definitely. so much. Um, just before we end, just a couple more things yeah. I'd love to touch on. Yeah. Um, yesterday, you put up the most powerful video. Um, mm. uh, it was about the anniversary of George Floyd and your brother's death. Yeah. Um, and I was just wondering whether in making that, because it must have been really hard to make, are you feeling hopeful for the future or are you feeling sort of fearful for the future? I, I live in hope. I, I have to live in hope. You know, I've got a 10 year old son myself, so I have to live in hope and I'm hopeful for the future. I think things have moved forward. It was, it was nice to be able to speak to some people from 93 uh, and then sort of see the progression that we have come to today. I, I think there's definitely been things that we've moved forward with there's still things that we still got to do and there's still work to be done um, but we are on the right track we, we have a better understanding we're having better open conversations um, people are understanding that it comes from within inside them and it's, you can't leave it to other people so all these things are progression as mm -hmm. far as I can see all these things will enable us to get to the better place that we want to get to in the future mm -hmm. and there are negatives to social media but the positives are that um, information is getting out there definitely. and people are I think getting much more of an understanding definitely definitely and with anything you know there's always going to be good points and bad points and I try to ignore the bad points as much as possible and then we try to celebrate the good points but yeah, yeah in the, those social media platforms are great for interacting learning having conversations finding that information for yourself and and promoting causes that you want to get behind as well so as much as it does have some bad layers to it as well, I, I try to mm. focus on the good bits of it all, yeah. Mm. Um, and, then, and then to end, you've um, set up a foundation yep. in your brother's memory and you have a Stephen Lawrence Day, yep. which is April 22nd. Yep. Um, how can people get involved? What is the day? What's the foundation? Yeah, so the foundation is based around three C's, which is classrooms, communities and careers. And uh, for the classroom part, we wanted to make sure that Stephen was taught inside schools, that his legacy and what he stood for around friendship, respect and difference can be taught and understood through Stephen's story. And then in the community, we understood that there's community groups out there that are doing wonderful things with, with, with different people and we wanted to support them and try to, because we've got a national reach and try to use those different organisations to enable us to get our national reach. So we this year we sponsored uh, 10 different groups around the country and they did weird and wonderful things from a TikTok concert where they had performances from people from America, from Jamaica, from South Africa to uh, there's a gentleman in Coventry that's got something called the Fridays group where every Friday he gets together young people and he allows them to do whatever they feel like they're good at. So that can be poetry, they can come do spoken word, they can act, they can sing, they can rap. Again, it's just about promoting positivity for young people. And then for careers, uh, we have something called a digital apprenticeship, where we're trying to approach and say to young people that traditional A-levels, university is great, but that might not be for everyone. Have you thought about maybe doing an apprenticeship? And, and the digital apprenticeship, we live in a digital world now where, especially since lockdown, we've understood that there are things that we can do things now that we never did before. So can we give them the skill set and give them job opportunities in the digital world? And so we have that as well. So that's what the day was based around. And yeah, it's, it's been, people can, we've got a website, we're on social media as well. 
Uh, we're looking for more volunteers for people to, to get part and to, to do things for next year as well in our own workplaces, our own schools as well. Cool. Well, I'll take a look at that and everybody else who's listening should as well. But they should also buy this book, Thank no matter what age. If you've got kids, buy it for your kids. Um, but if you're an adult, I really recommend reading it too. I, I think it's really fantastic. Mm. Um, thank you so much no, for talking you, to me today. It's been Thank really you. interesting. No, and, thank you. And I love it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs>